and welcome to our snowflake, star, and sunflower class. Different seasons, they can be used for different things. First I'm going to give you the pattern to make them in different sizes. I have here the 7 millimeter, 10 inches long, makes a smaller version, the smallest one. The multicolored wind you see is 7 millimeter, cut 12 inches long. Then you'll see we have the 3 8 at 16 inches long, half inch at 20 inches long, and 5 8 at 22 or 24 inches long. Four clamps for the corners, eight, you need what, four for each one. 50 clothespins in total. The diamond are the best ones you can get in a grocery store. A stick cut to the length that you're making. We made the half inch at 20 inches, so this stick is 20 inches long with a half inch mark in the middle. I make sure that my ends are nice and square, wrap an elastic around it, pull the reed out, mark it at the halfway point, make sure it's laying flat, and cut. It's the best way to get them all equal, and it makes a difference when we're doing this. So there's your start, gather your materials, and come back and we'll get this snowflake made. I found the best way to do this, finally after years and years and years, is to cut a stick the length I want. This happens to be 20 inches. I've cut pre-cut these just so I didn't have a bunch of long ends, but cut your stick exactly the length you want your materials. Then we're going to mark the center. The center is the, one of the most important parts of this journey is the center. We're going to mark it this way on the side. You'll see it, but you won't see it when it's finished. These have been wet. They're not soaking wet because the glue would not hold if they were that wet. I have a really good um, wood glue, one that is waterproof because I want to paint my baskets. We'll show you a picture of those at the end. So here we go. I am going to take the first two. I do everything this way. Find the horizontal. Here, if I have one that has a little bend to it, I'm going to put that bend to the outside so as it doesn't smack into its neighbor. I'm going to put a dab of glue and each intersection all the way through this thing. So there is my dab of glue and there is my center. Left hand's important. We're going to use that to hold everything together. It needs to go up a whisker. And then here, I'm following those pieces. Also, what I didn't go over with you and I'm going to right now is the good side and the bad side. The material has a rough side, which you want inside. So there's some little hairy things there and some that's really smooth. I can tell by rubbing my finger after years of it, but that's what I'm looking for. The bad side is gonna be on the inside. Put this here, and this is gonna be an under, so I'm gonna put some glue on this side and glue here and glue here. And as I slide these two under, got the joints glued. Same thing on this side. I'm going to put some on this piece and this piece and this one here. So it's under, over, under. And lift these up so you don't lose your glue. Slide them right into place. And if I have extra, I just wipe it off and put it over there. Under, over, now this can be made with many different sizes. This happens to be a half inch flat, um, three eighths, shorter three eighths, smaller reeds make smaller snowflakes, and bigger reeds make bigger snowflakes. The trick is clothes pins, which you'll see in a minute. Get this one under here without getting glue everywhere. There we go. And these holes 
want to be of equal size. I only use five for these. Uh, they're simple. Like I said, some people call them snowflakes, other people call them sunflowers. Doesn't matter what you call them, they make a pretty decoration any time of year. under and slide it right into the spot. It's very important that these pieces line up, that they're all the same length. That's why we went to all the trouble of marking them. Get a little of that extra glue over there. Now they're going to want to slip and slide everywhere. So it takes 50 clothespins to do one snowflake. I know that's crazy, but the more clothespins the better on this particular piece. And clothes pins are the cheap thing. So we've pinned all of those. We have everything in place. We've pinned them. And now I like, I found over the years, some clothes pins aren't what they were when I was young. So I like the little clamp here to do the corner. It gives me a nice, it, I know it's going to hold it. So I bring this three o'clock here, right down in front of you. Get a bend to it. Bring it here in front of you and get the glue all the way to the edge. Now bring six o'clock, the neighbor, up here and this is where I like my clamp that I know it's going to hold. So then I put a dab of glue here and bring the second one in. This is going to be a 90 degree angle. This is parallel. And I'm going to pin this. Now, glue here and glue here. I've grabbed the second one in and I slide it under here and make sure I've got, I've got a nice little square there and pin all four. And we'll do this all the way around. at a 90 degree angle. You can go this way if you want pointy snowflakes. I don't prefer that. And you do one, do one or the other. Stick to what you start with. If you want pointy snowflakes, fine. But if you don't, get that 90 degree angle there. I spend half of my time looking for my glue. Put that right there. And pin it. Glue it. That's the whole name of this game, is glue and pin, glue and pin. I glue them, give them all night to dry, and the glue to dry, and put them together the next day. years of making these that this is lifted up can you see where it's lifted there and lifted there I don't like that so I find little things like a strip of cardboard or a little piece of reed and I push it in there and it holds helps hold those down so I'm just gonna use my little aids um, just shove them in there and it'll make sense to you down the road Keeps those laying No, flapping in the breeze. So you've got a big gap there, and if I didn't get enough glue, it's not going to, it'll move later. Let's just lift that up. There. See how that makes it work? You could put more clothespins in there if you wanted. What you're trying to do is control that angle right there. 
and this one. So there you have it. Let this sit until the glue has dried. You take off all your clothespins and this is what you end up with. You need two of them. We're going to put them this way so that the, your long one and these are your bad sides are in. Your long one goes here and again with the glue stick or glue not a glue stick. You want to make sure this glue holds it together especially if you're going to put a finish on it because it's awful when they come unglued. Can ruin your day. Here we go. I use fishing line when I can find some. Make a tiny hole and hang these with fishing line. They fascinate people. They look like so much work. You can also make them out of paper. I don't make them as long, the pieces as long when I use paper. Uh, make them a little more stubby. The paper won't be as, as stiff as this, so make them a little shorter so they won't be wobbly. Okay, and I forgot we should be using two clothespins because I want to glue it here, glue this, and glue the second spot I put glue on it, so I want it to look like this. Flip it over, get some glue right out there to the end. See, you can see we use lots of glue stick. You only use half as many in this step as you did the last step. So it will take 50, which is about a what a package. Most packages of clothespins are 50. I found that diamond makes the best, has the best spring. Clothespins can be good, but the spring is what makes them hold or not hold. And some of the ones coming from overseas aren't as good as others. My very, very favorite clothespins, which are really too strong for this job. I will show you. They come from a lady and a carpenter. It's called Kevin's, Kevin's Carpentry. I believe you find them on Etsy. These things will hold blue jeans on the clothesline. And there we have it. This is our snowflake. Okay, we've finished our snowflake. This snowflake is ready. The glue finished drying. I use snips or shears to get in here and I don't have one with little jagged edges. I cleaned them all up. Put them here and clean up all your edges so it's nice and spiffy. I use a, I happen to have the tiniest little hole punch. A push pin, a awl, a number of things would make a tiny hole. You see that hole? Fishing line, white cord, this is hemp through here. Fishing line and people have no idea how you possibly made it hang so beautifully in the window. This one I did with colors I happen to have left over. And see here I missed a trim on that one. And that one maybe could be trimmed up just a little bit. Go around it and neaten it up. And I had punched a hole here for again a fishing line or something. So they have a lovely little look for your centerpiece or the window. You can use them anywhere. Try it, enjoy it, and I hope this helped. I mentioned clothespins in this and I found the little card for Kevin's Quality Clothespins. I recommend them. I buy them. I bought hundreds of them. And she, they can be found on Facebook at a lady at the carpenter or on Etsy. And if you have a really rugged job like blue jeans you need home, this is your guy. If you enjoyed the experience, please hit like. Subscribe to see new free patterns. Hit the notification bell. We'll, it'll let you know when I've done something different. And if we've done something that you want to comment on, please feel free to put on in the area below. Thank you and have a great day. Happy Weeby!